do an AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here. We're talking about limits once again, and we are kind of knee deep into the concept of the delta epsilon definition of limit that um, has sort of taken a turn here. Um, we're now kind of concerning ourselves with focusing on a not so pretty type of function, and one here in this case that you can obviously see is linear or not linear, and <laughs> quadratic instead, that we are still very interested in, in, in applying the definition of limit in order to find the delta value that gives us this particular range of tolerance for our um, y values or our epsilon. So um, if, if you're a student of mine, then it's likely that you have the note packet in front of you. And you can kind of peruse through all of these uh, directions on how to use the TI Inspire to uh, in, uh, find this particular value of, of, of delta. If you're someone watching this who's not um, from my school, uh, no worries um, in the link to this particular, um, uh, I'm sorry, in the information uh, below this YouTube video, that is, there will be a link where you can actually find this particular document so that you can um, kind of read through and find out all the different commands on the TI Inspire that will allow you to do this. So we're going to go ahead and start, and I do have to launch my Inspire software, which I haven't done here. So while it's launching, we're going to discuss, you know, why do we use the TI Inspire here? Well, do we have to? Well, the answer to that is, in this particular case, no. The algebra that's needed to solve a problem like this isn't prohibitive. Solving quadratic inequalities with absolute values is not an impossibility. It can be a little messy, but we're going to go ahead and bypass that, and we are going to use some really cool technology. So the first thing that I would like everyone to be able to do is to make a new document. So from the home screen, we would choose option one, new document. And as you can see from our particular example, we're, we're going to add a graph page. I'm going to flip back and forth here just a little bit. You can see our example deals with the function 2x squared minus 10. So that's going to be the particular function that we graph, 2x squared minus 10. All right, double check, 2x squared minus 10 indeed was what we were graphing. I understand that part of the graph, this parabola doesn't lie completely on our window. That's no big deal. We can adjust the window here in just a little bit. But what we're going to focus on is the fact that we want to take the limit of this function as x approaches 3. Now, that's not anything that's remarkably difficult. In fact, we all know that the answer to that limit, or at least hopefully we know the answer to that limit, uh, can be found as easily as letting x be 3 and that would yield a result for L of 2 times 9, 18 minus 10, which is 8. Now, I want to make sure I say something here. Yes, I let x equal 3. Yes, I understand that you're really not allowed to do that. Nowhere in the definition of limit does it say that x will equal 3 in this case. x is allowed to approach 3, but x is not allowed to equal 3. So, I get sort of by that by simply using a shortcut because I understand that approaching three and equaling three is really the same thing when you don't have any strange discontinuities happening. All right, let's go ahead and make sure we understand some other terminology here, like the value of C, the value that X is approaching is indeed three. And I think it becomes pretty obvious here that the epsilon is given to you as 0.1. So we're going to return to our document, and I want us to go ahead and graph the limit, the answer 8 that we would get. So we're going to go into, uh, I'm going to hit tab to bring up our graph entry line, and I'll enter 8, and we'll see a horizontal line uh, <laughs> if we had the right scale. No big deal. We're going to go ahead and make some alterations here. I'm going to take this guy up to 12, and I think I'm going to decide to bring the bottom of this up a little bit, say to negative 2. We can make some adjustments later. I'm going to move my function 1 and function 2 out of the way here just a little bit. And now what I want to do is create a window. I want to put a, a bit of a range here with my limit 8. I want to have some tolerance that would take me both above and below. 
what kind of tolerance am I talking about? Well, if we go back to the document, the epsilon is our tolerance. That would be 0.1. So what we can do is go to our tab menu, and we're going to graph that horizontal line 8, but we're going to add a 0.1 to it. And I know it may not look like we're able to see much here. We're going to make an adjustment in a bit to the window. And for the tab function 4, we can graph 8 minus 0.1 and that will show up in magenta. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out of the way. And then, because it's so difficult to see the, the fact that I do have three lines, three horizontal lines here, I'm going to go ahead and use a bit of a zoom. And you can zoom a variety of ways. You can zoom in. You can zoom with a box. I'm going to prefer to make a box here. And you still have m many decisions that you can make. Um, I'm going to elect to position my upper left corner to the left of the y-axis only for the reason that I'd like to see my y-axis in the picture. So I'll start up here, and then I'm going to position my lower right corner. I'm going to go a little below the x-axis and just kind of see what that looks like. Notice that I make sure that I have these intersection points with the curve in those horizontal lines within my box. Now granted they won't be in the middle of my box, but I'm okay with that. Okay, now perhaps I should have thought about that a little bit more carefully because as you can see, I don't really have quite enough detail with with my three lines and my curve. So that's the beauty about zooming box. You can do it as many times as you want. Let's go ahead and just get the nitty gritty within our box right about there. Now we've got quite a bit of, of, of distance between those horizontal lines. Yes, I did sacrifice my Y axis, but that's not a big deal. I can always you know, use trace and various features of the Inspire to figure out where I am. Let's go ahead and hit escape to get out of the zoom box mode. The next thing that I want to do is I want to figure out what are the points of intersection with my black and my magenta curve. Now remember, the black and the magenta curve represent our limit 8, adding 0.1 and subtracting 0.1. Okay, so in order to figure out those intersection points, I would go into the menu, analyze graph, and I would choose intersection. Now the TI Inspire is going to ask you a few questions. It's going to ask you, I believe, four questions in total. First of all, graph, which graph do I want my first graph to be for the intersection? I can choose the parabola. The second graph, I'll choose the black line. And then for my lower bound, I just want to position my marker here so it's left of the intersection, because you know, after all, there could be more than one intersection. I will click Enter. And then for the final answer, uh, question, upper bound, I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm going to use my finger and kind of slide across the touchpad over here. And slowly but surely, what will happen is if I slide to the right, any intersection that is found will show up. You can hit enter to exit that particular mode. I'm going to slide this over here to the right. And because this is AP calculus, I'm going to elect to get a few uh, another decimal place of, of precision and I really only need that for the X coordinate so I'm going to hover over the X coordinate and I'll hit the plus button to give me another couple of decimal places if 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 four is acceptable to you you can keep it there you, you really three is the bare minimum I have no problem if you leave four repeat that procedure with the intersection between now the blue and the magenta Menu, Analyze Graph, Intersection, the blue graph, the magenta graph, position left of the intersection, Enter, Slide Across. It's the exact same thing that we did before. And you can add a decimal place of precision if the X coordinate is grayed out and you hit plus. I'm going to move this guy up just a little bit closer to that point. So what are we trying to do here? Well, remember that in this particular function, in this particular problem, this limit, our x value was approaching 3. But we were never really allowed to be 3. 
the question that we're trying to answer is how close to three should we be to guarantee that we're only at the very worst point one away from eight hopefully that makes sense and this window that we started to develop with the inspire is leading us towards the answer to that question i know i am now point one away from the answer eight vertically how far horizontally am i from three well you've just found two different possibilities for our x value but we want to make sure that we pick the one that does give us the smaller of, of the two distances so we're going to essentially have to take three and subtract it from both of these particular values of x because it's a distance we don't really worry about the sign so we're going to take the absolute value of that result but rather than moving to a calculator page and subtracting those and having to remember these two quantities or write them down on paper what we can do is store them into our calculator so to do that you would go ahead and hover over say the first x coordinate that we want here it doesn't matter which one hit control followed by menu to bring up a series of possibilities option five looks good store the default name is always going to be var um, not a real descriptive name for this x coordinate i would like to call it x better yet since i'm going to have another x i better call it x with some subscript like one now we don't really see the subscript you know in its normal form but using x1 will will basically uh, do the same job so hit enter and notice that that coordinate has now become bold we'll do the same thing with the other x coordinate control menu store and how about we call that x2 and now it's stored now all we need to do is go to another page control doc will make an additional page and we'll make this a calculator page and then we'll just take the absolute value of those two particular uh, values so we're going to go into our template choose our absolute value and then we'll take x1 and subtract our target value for c which is three and then we'll do the same thing with x2 notice when i do type in x2 as i did x1 it does become bold which is just the calculator basically saying hey i know that value it was stored and then there's my result now remember we do have two different answers here these aren't quite the same values they're very close well the reason why they're not the same has a lot to do with the fact that our function our graph was somewhat curved it may not look like it's curved so much in this particular window because of the idea of local linearity but it was curved and that indeed will go a long way in making the two values of x a little different had we analyzed a linear function here then we would probably have rest assured that these two values would be the same but because we want the, the value of delta to be a specific number that we know we must be less than that works for either side of C we must go with the smaller value so in this case 0 0.008 and because of the similarities between these two decimals I'm going to go ahead and, and list all six places for my final answer so 0 0.008322 and that would be the answer to this particular problem that would be your theta value maximum so theta would want to be less than that particular decimal anyway i hope this helps out a little bit and i will see you next time